So I'm sure you'd agree with me that most people with dangerously little knowledge of color grading could actually probably make a shot look pretty good pretty quick. The art really comes in when you need to make that shot look coherent across an entire scene. And I get asked all the time in my comments, can you show us some techniques for doing scene balancing and that sort of thing. So I'm going to do that in this episode. And to demonstrate that, I'm going to use this uh, music promo that I graded just before Christmas. This is the actual project again, similar to the one I did in my last episode. And I'm just going to take it the next stage on and actually grade more than one shot. The, this is a music video from Beard Meets Food. He's a YouTuber, two and a half million subscribers. He goes around the world eating tons of food, basically. But every Christmas, he does a parody single for charity. And this is the one, it's called I Got Cheesecake. And let's have a look at the look. Nah, f that. Cause I got cheesecake. So this is the kind of look that he wanted. Let me get a little bit bigger screen so you can see what's going on. Let me move my scopes down here. And let me just play it through. But as you can see, it's the look they wanted was what they call gothic looking. So I took from that quite desaturated skin tones, as you can see here, uh, colder in the blacks, probably just a little bit of coolness in the blacks. And yeah, nice and contrasty. So you can see it more here. We've got the blues going on here, but we're keeping their skin tones quite desaturated. All right, so this is already balanced. So let me just come back out of that. But I've left here, there's three shots coming up where we come out of the gig scene, as it were, and we go back to her house. This is his sister, Sister Beard, who's singing along with him. But I still want to keep that skin tone the same as it was in the church. These three shots are not graded at all yet. So as you can see, there's not a single grade on there. And what I've done on the first shot here is applied my fixed no tree. Now, if you look at any of my previous episodes, you'll understand how my fixed no trees work. I'm not gonna go into it in too much detail here, but it's really important to look at fixed no trees to get you efficient and, and working at your best. There's a few pre-made nodes here that have got things on them already. I'm gonna explain what that is. So I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm gonna do step by step. So not only am I gonna show you how to balance, I'm gonna show you what I actually did to this shot as well. All right, first thing we need to do is check our color management. And as always, I'm in a non-color managed workflow. So I'm just in regular DaVinci YRGB. And my timeline color space, DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate, because that's the larger color space that I want to work in. But my output color space, Rec 709 Gamma 2.4, because that's what my monitor's calibrated to, and that's my deliverable. All right, so that means I've got to work with color space transforms to get my image the best it can be. So from its scene referred to display referred. So it was shot on a Blackmagic Design Pockets uh, camera. So my first node here is gonna take me from Blackmagic to DaVinci Wide Gamut. That's my working color space. I'm gonna grade here on this middle bit here. And then on this node here, we're gonna take DaVinci Wide Gamut back to Rec. 709. And I'm gonna switch that on early so I can actually see what the grade looks like. Otherwise I'll be grading in DaVinci Wide Gamut color space and I wouldn't have a clue what's going on because my monitor is not DaVinci Wide Gamut. Hope that makes sense. So let's have a look at this first one. I'm gonna switch it on, go to my effects. Input color space, Blackmagic Design Pocket Film Gen 4. Output color space, DaVinci Wide Gamut. And then I need to switch that other node on, this one here. And I literally applied a color space transform from my effects. There's the color space transform. And I've set it to be DaVinci Wide Gamut as my input and my output Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. All right, so we're going Blackmagic to DaVinci Wide Gamut. We're gonna grade in DaVinci Wide Gamut and we're going to take DaVinci Wide Gamut back to 709 at this node here. There's a few nodes on the end of that. If you've watched any of my episodes before, you might understand why already, but I am going to show you what is going on with those in a moment. All right, I'm going to bring my scopes back up here so you can see what's going on. Let's just lift that up a little bit. I'm just using middle mouse click to just move my node tree around so you can see it a bit better. And okay, so the first thing I normally do before I start grading is just check that I'm on the right bit of the shot. So I'm just gonna play that through. In this instance, it doesn't really matter where we are in that shot. But what I wanna do is take it from, uh, from the gig that was going on in the church scene and take elements of that, even though we're in her house. So I still want to make sure her skin tone's sort of desaturated, just to give it some continuity. But obviously, we're in a home, not in the church. So it's gonna look slightly different. So let's start balancing it up. My second node, Okay, first node is the CST. Second node here is my general exposure 
and uh, and just first balance. So looking at my scopes here, we can see we're not clipping anything in the black, so we're not set too far down, which is good. We could probably do with lifting this up a little bit. It's all sat a little bit down. So I'm gonna go straight to my offset here. I'm gonna use my panel, but I'm affecting offset with this wheel here. And I'm just gonna start lifting that up. Oops, switch it on. And let's just add a little bit more exposure in here. You can do this in the HDR tools as well. I'm just doing it for speed here in the primary tools. I'm just gonna stay in the primary tools for this one. And let's just bring down my lift a little bit. So I just wanna make sure these blacks are sitting nicely down here. And just before I go too far with this, for this job, I worked with a film print emulation. Look, I often do that, and I often use the Kodak 2383, as do probably most people in the world. But it really works on this one because I wanted that coolness in the blacks, which that is a very typical property of that LUT, and just sort of nice sort of creamy highlights without adding too much saturation in there. So I'm gonna switch that on. Now, I've done two things with this. This is the node that's got the regular Kodak 2383 LUT that's built into DaVinci Resolve. So I'm gonna switch that on here. And I found this to be a bit harsh. I haven't used this in the entire episode, in the entire program, sorry, not episode, uh, in the entire program, because I found in this instance that my Dehancer film print emulation for the Kodak 2383 gave me a more pleasing result. So what I'm gonna do is grab a still of that. Okay, so to do that without the panel, right and click, grab still. And I'm just gonna compare it to this node here, which is the preset Dehancer one. I'm gonna to go to effects. The only thing on in here is the film print emulation. Kodak 2383 print film. And I have slightly knocked down the exposure, just very, very slightly in here. But I wanna show you the difference between the, the, Kodak, the Kodak one in Resolve and the one that's built into Dehancer. So let me just double click this, and that'll give us a wipe. You can see here, that's the built into Resolve one, and that's the Dehancer one, and it's just a little bit warmer, and I found that more pleasing for this particular promo. So I just wanna explain what's going on there. So I'm gonna leave that one switched off. Obviously, don't use both of them. Now, I need to put that on now because I'm gonna work underneath it. So we're working underneath this Rec. 709 uh, Color Space Transform, and I'm working under the Film Emulation Lab. There's no point in putting that on at the end because it's gonna do quite a lot to your image. So I can now go back to my node number two, and just check my fine tuning on there. So I'm gonna go back to my primaries. I'm just gonna check what's going on here. And I'm good. Now I'm gonna move on to node number three. And in here, I'm gonna start adjusting my color temperature and saturation. Now I don't wanna to add too much saturation because we're trying to keep uh, that desaturated look. And there's quite a bit going on in there already. But I just want to adjust my color temperature just because it's a little bit warm in there. To something like that. I'm going to add a little bit more gain. And I'm just going to see what a bit of saturation in there does. Yeah, it's looking nice. So looking at the scopes, everything's looking pretty good here. Um, I might just balance that blue up a little bit. So I'm going to go to my gain here. I'm going to do it on my panel. I'll just push it slightly towards blue there. Not too much. And that's looking really good. So what I'm going to do is grab another still now. And we're gonna use this as our reference to balance these two shots. So let's just copy the grade across. I'm just gonna highlight the two of them. And I'm gonna middle mouse click, and that's now copied across. And you'd expect that that grade would match pretty well because it was shot in the same room with the same lights. However, it's not. If you look at her face here, that is quite clearly uh, a much higher exposure than the shot that we used here. So the first thing we're gonna do is move on to a separate node for that. This will be our sort of fixed balance node and we need to get this in a better place. So the first thing we do is go to my offset. Let's just bring that down. Now, when I'm bringing that down, what I'm trying to do is match the skin tones and match the face as it were. I'm not trying to match the walls because we're facing a different direction. I want the face to be balanced because I don't wanna start keying skin tones and that sort of thing. I wanna get those balanced. That's what I'm looking at. She is the main subject in the room. So to balance these up, how can I do that? Well, if we go onto our scopes, make sure you've got this thing on if you're not used to it, display qualifier focus. And as I go over, whoops. As I hover over skin tone, you can see clearly on the scope what region you're in. So this line here and this line here, I can ignore. These are the walls, okay? I'm not interested in balancing the walls yet. So I wanna balance the skin tone. Now the problem I've got is most of this image, which is this side of my scope, 
is wall. She's a smaller part than she is on this side. So we can fix that. If we go down, I'm just, just move my scopes out of the way. If I go to my sizing here and go to down here, reference sizing, we can actually change the size of our reference image. So what I'm going to do is zoom in. If I can get these to match a little bit better, they will be represented on the scopes in a more fair way. So something like that. Now if we look at our scopes, we've got a much better representation of what's actually going on. So here's skin tone. Oops, click on that. Uh, I need to put my qualifier on. There we go. So there's her skin tone on that side and there's her skin tone on that side. So actually they're really well balanced now. Maybe just a little bit down, a little bit more. But they are looking good. So that's one good technique for balancing shots. So now what I'm going to do is copy to this one, the one from this side. Now we can see that's actually probably a bit too dark. So I'm going to go onto my corrector node here. and I'm just going to lift it up a little bit more. And let's take off this and play that through. So that's pretty well balanced. I'd say this is still slightly higher in her skin tone. So I'm just going to bring it down a little bit more just with my gain. Let's recall that shot. And what you can actually even do is you can balance from here. So I can right hand click and say wipe timeline clip. And that's pretty good. Now, if you want to really check them together, what you can do is if I highlight them all and we can click up here into our sort of split view and down here you can choose all these different modes. So I'm going to say selected clips and we can now actually see them and I'm seeing them on my output monitor. You can see them to check how well the balance is. So that's actually looking really good. So this is one really good technique for balancing your shots. Get a still, reposition it so that your scopes match and obviously you're going to use your scopes to do your balancing. All right, let me come out of that mode. So what we can do now is group these together. So because they're already highlighted, I'm going to right hand click. I'm going to say add into a new group. I'm going to call this um, jeans. So now what we can do is start creating a bit more of our look. So I'm going to go back to this shot here. I'm going to click on my next one. Now I'm not going to use node four because I've already used node four on these two shots here. I'm going to go to node six. It's called node six because this parallel mixer is counted as node five. So this is node six. And we can now start adjusting anything else that we want to. So I'm going to go into my curves. I'm just going to move my scopes out of the way a little bit. Maybe let's have a look at the hue of her shirt actually. So hue versus hue. Click on the shirt. A little adjustment. What I always do with these is just expand them out a little bit. You don't want them too tight in there. And let's just have a look somewhere around about there. I'm going to switch that on and off to see if it's better. And that is slightly better. Um, oh, maybe it's a bit too much. Let me just pull it down a little bit more. Yeah, something like that. And what I'm going to do now is copy that across to the other two shots. And because they're in a group, what I can do is say color, ripple no changes to current group. And what that will do now, if I click on here, you see that node six has already been changed. And node seven has got the same change to the color of the shirt. So again, it's a really good technique. That's why I use a fixed node tree. Now, if we move on to the next shot, we'll see that we're still keeping that nice skin tone property. We've still got that sort of quite low saturation in a skin tone, and that is matching the same here. So let's just play the scene through and just check it works. I'll bring it from the church. Group. So that's looking great. And what we could do now is add some vignettes and maybe some little windows and shapes and things. I'm going to do a whole series of these. So hit the subscription, hit the notification, look after yourselves, and I'll see you in the next episode.